Earlier today, Whitman hit the stage and said HPE is seeing a slowdown in the public cloud. We asked if businesses are really rethinking their move to the cloud and what that means for HPE going forward. Take a listen. The way we see the world is it's around hybrid IT, and you have to start with your apps and your data. What do you want locked down in your data center, untouched only by your, by your employees' hands? What might you want in a private cloud on-prem with public cloud economics, by the way? What would you want in a managed service? And there is a role for public cloud, but we're seeing for reasons of cost, security, control, that people are beginning to say, hmm, I wonder if I have gone too far in putting workloads into the public cloud, and they want to bring those workloads back onto on-prem. So what does that mean for HPE? Well, it means that it, we have to do what's in our customers' best interests, and their best interest is all around creating a multi-cloud environment, a hybrid IT environment, where they can have the right landing spot for their applications and their workloads, and we make sure that they don't uh, end up with vendor lock-in. You know, a lot of people say that once you move something to the public cloud, it's very difficult to move it back, and it's very expensive. So we want to just give customers choice and make sure that we do for them what is best for them. Now, there have been some questions about your cloud partnership with Microsoft. How is that actually going? Yeah, it's going well. I mean, it really is going well. We've done a lot of business with Microsoft for many years, and they are our public cloud partner. So when we work with a customer and they say, listen, I, these are the workloads I'd like to have in the public cloud, then we say, you know what, Azure is a great um, opportunity. And if you want Azure cloud functionality on-prem, you do Azure Stack and Azure Stack runs on HP gear on-prem. And so I think, um, you know, listen, I think Microsoft's got a very good strategy and we're great partners with them. And again, it's about giving customers choice. Where do they want their workloads? Where do they want their data? And if they want a public cloud partner, we recommend Azure. But if they start making some of their own data center equipment, what does that mean for HPE? Well, this is a dynamic industry, and you know it's interesting. Um, you know, for a long time, infrastructure wasn't in fashion, but we see all kinds of people now getting into the infrastructure business. So, if that's what Microsoft does, then we'll try to figure out how to, you know, have a relationship around cooperation. You know, sometimes we cooperate, sometimes we compete. You know, we'll figure out how to work with them. We we admire the company a lot, and um, you know, we'll figure it out. Now, tech stocks have been on a tear since the election, despite political uncertainty. How, what are the market dynamics that you see helping or hurting HPE? Yeah, so it's a, it's a challenging global environment right now. There's some countries that are doing very well, and then there's uncertainty in a number of countries, and, and uncertainty is not good for business. So our strongest market in Europe is Germany. Germany's doing incredibly well. We're selling a lot of business in Germany, but the UK is challenged. Public sector spending is down. The UK firms and people investing in the UK are holding back, I think, because of Brexit. And it doesn't mean they won't spend, but they're kind of paused and saying, gee, I don't know what's going to happen here. Maybe I should just take take a little time to think it through. Japan actually is pretty strong for us right now. Australia is coming back. Latin America is doing very well. And the U.S. continues to be a little uneven. Sometimes, um, you know, one quarter it's quite strong, and then we see a little bit of weakness. So it's a mixed environment. But, you know, listen, we have to make it work in every environment. So we, uh, we you know, sell as hard as we can and try to give its customers as much choice, no matter what's going on in the backdrop. You've led several different high-profile technology companies. I'm curious what you think about the unicorn startups, what you see them doing well, what you see them doing poorly. Yeah, so listen, the startup scene in Silicon Valley and elsewhere is alive and well. I mean, it's a renaissance of innovation. I mean, think about what you're seeing. And listen, there's a lot of very innovative companies that are unicorn valuations. What we are seeing is the um, ability of venture capital money to keep funding money losing startups is starting, you're, we're starting to see a pullback there. And one of the reasons that we were able to buy SimpliVity is it wasn't clear they were going to be able to raise a next round and they needed to be tucked into a big company. Nimble had, had a great fundraising round but felt like now they needed to be tucked into a big company. So we think there's always going to be unicorns, there's always going to be new companies, and, uh, but we think it does present an opportunity for us as we think about our M&A strategy and our innovation strategy. HPE is heavily investing in what you call the machine or your vision for, for the future of computing. How will this help customers in the future and how is that vision evolving? 
So one of the big challenges our industry faces is the demand to build data centers, the demand for space, and the demand for energy is unsustainable. I mean, we work in parts of the world where there is no more energy on the grid. So that caused us, you know, a number of years ago to think through the fundamental model of compute. It's always been a CPU-centric model. And we said, can we turn that on its head and make it a memory-centric compute where instead of through copper wires data is moved, it's moved through photonics, which would mean smaller space, far more energy efficiency. And we're super pleased with the progress of the machine. We're already um, embedding parts of the technology into our next generation servers and storage. And uh, we're super excited about the amount of data that can be processed with very low power utilization and in a small form factor. So it's, uh, it's right on track. It's had its ups and downs as these big research projects do, but we're super excited about it.